Hi, I'm Deborah Henson Conant, and I'm here with Kathleen Wiley, and this is Young at Harp. Kathleen and I are both harp players. Kathleen is a Jungian analyst. I am a composer and a performer, and we are here to talk about the relationship between Jung and Jung's ideas and the ideas of the strings of passion, which are at the heart of my work. And Kathleen, you had suggested that we talk about something in particular today. Yes, I want to talk about relationships. Because as we came together and we were talking about various possibilities, one of the things that I think is so key and fundamental to Jung's psychology is the importance of relationship. And in fact, my favorite quote of all of his quotes, his, his writings would fill up two shelves, I don't have all of his books behind me, is that by building a conscious relationship to the unconscious, we can mitigate the negative effects of the unconscious. Do Shall I say that, that again? again? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. By building a conscious relationship to the unconscious, we can mitigate the negative effects of the unconscious. This is really interesting to me, especially because lately I've had this experience that I'm starting to differentiate certain things, and they're so mm -hmm. subtle. I can barely even, uh, I mean, as subtle as something that every entrepreneur and artist I think deals with, which is the difference between my value and my business. So, the, or the value, mm. the deep value of what I'm doing and, you know, how that's showing up in the world in terms of, you know, some people would look at it as fame or um, acknowledgement <laughs> or money or whatever it is. And that, I don't know why that popped into my head when you said that, because until that point, I, I notice that many people struggle, many, com, com, uh, many artists struggle with this, especially people that are in, for example, my Harness Your Muse program, people who want to go to a new shift in their career, that they're struggling with um, the relationship between their value as an artist and how that's seen in the world. Now, I don't know if that is at heart of what you just said, but that makes me think that they're unconsciously thinking that their value is being shown up in the world in a certain way. Does that make any sense? It makes a lot of sense. And I would say it's much more um, primitive than that they're thinking it because they aren't even aware. Like once you thought it, you could begin to separate the two and say, I have value and worth as a musician, regardless of whether the collective world receives it and supports it. But as long as it's in the unconscious, it's, it's one and the same, it's merged. And so you're not even able to think the thought. And so it the, shows up as a feeling that almost motivates your activities and you're not aware of it. That exactly, that, that's it. It's an unconscious energy system that drives you in certain directions or creates certain impulses that because you're just like consumed by it, you don't have a self to be in relationship to it. Right. It can create all kinds of negative actions, thoughts, feelings, experiences. But once you can get yourself in relationship to it, you can think about it. Um, I want to just come to one. Yeah. So the, princip the principles in the strings of passion are starts with impulse to do or to touch something, then a structure, and then character. And all those three things can happen within an individual. Then we get to roles, and you're making me think about that. Roles and deconstruction comes later, but those are two principles in which we start to break things down so that we can interact with them. Like, for yeah. example, a sports team has roles, and that is how different people have different positions, and then they can play together, and then they can integrate, and then they can have relationship to each other. But until we can break those roles down, we can't really have a relationship to something that, that we can't differentiate. Is that, would you say that's true? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say that's true. And in fact, it's in part of the individuation process, which again is Jung's term for living the truth of our soul versus living according to learned internalized patterns of who I should be, who I must be. We can apply that to even your realization that your value was way too caught up in your business performance and, and, and what was happening in the outer world. And so that when you could begin to take those things apart and have a sense of yourself 
period, apart from the role of businesswoman or apart from the role of musician entertainer or apart from the role of harpist or solopreneur, whatever. Right. So then you can begin to say, wait a minute, I have a value in my own being. And this is so much what people are hungry to feel because all of us have, have had experiences where we end up feeling we have value only if we act a certain way or do a certain thing or we meet certain people's expectations. I mean, we could go on and on. So to fill our value and worth because we are, we are who we are. So how do we do that? And it sounds like, I mean, it, it, we've talked about the relationship with things like the relationship with an instrument or the relationship with a pet or the relationship with tools. It, mm -hmm. it can empower us and open us up. And certainly I've discovered that my relationship with this instrument gives me a voice that I didn't have or gives a platform for my voice. But as long as I'm trying to fit into what I think is a harpist, which is what I started out doing, mm -hmm. I, my voice is not coming forth. And this is something that I find almost everybody who comes to work with me is gets caught up in what it means to be a harpist or what it means to be a musician or how I should be or how I should be doing something and getting that differentiation so that we actually can start s experiencing, even if we can't describe it, but experiencing that there is an us that has some value and that then we can engage with it. So I think that's what you're talking about when you say relationship. Once we can differentiate, we can have a relationship. Absolutely, absolutely. And this is so hard. I mean, it's the heart of everything. It's the heart of working, being a musician, playing the harp. It's, a heart, it's the heart of our having this dialogue. It's the heart of um, our sending the video out to people who watch it and respond. Is that somewhere there's this experience of something outside of ourselves that actually helps us know something inside of ourselves. Can you say that again? There's yeah. Something, yeah. There is an experience of something outside of ourselves that helps us know something inside of ourselves. That's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's, it's the heart of this musical that I've written, The Golden Cage, which I won't go into. Mm -hmm. We can talk about it another time, but um, I just want to talk about it with the relationship with an instrument because yeah. that's, you know, that's kind of what we're talking about. And <clears throat> I've discovered when I first came to the harp, I didn't like the harp and I didn't like what it meant. And it looked like a girl's instrument to me. And I was like, and I didn't like the repertoire and, and yet I was drawn to it because of the nakedness of it. It's just strings and a, and a frame. That's it. That's it. And it had mechanism and I love tools and, and machinery. So I love that too. So I could see the machinery, but, and I could see all these things that had been put onto it about what it was and what it could do and what it couldn't do. And so when I first came to it, my intention was to liberate the instrument. I was like, what? This is not mm -hmm. just a, like, and I saw a folk, in, a folk harp and people, and my teacher was like, that's a, a student instrument. And I was like, why? Why can't it be a, mm -hmm. a, a concert instrument? I'm going to make it a concert instrument. And, and I felt that my own being was, what I, what, I, I, what I didn't realize, but I felt was that I could liberate myself through this instrument in a way that I couldn't by myself but that by putting that energy into this instrument, I discovered as the years went on that I was bringing myself a voice. Mm -hmm. And then I discovered that by sharing everything I'd created in, you know, in, in a school and in sheet music and in, and in concert, that then I was giving that to other people, but I wasn't aware of it. So right. the, the trajectory went, I see this thing, I want to liberate it, for whatever, you know, like, I will be the liberator of the harp, you know, but then what really happens is the harp liberates me. And then as I share it, that's something that other people, without me even being aware of it, and I don't think I was aware of any of that. So, mm -hmm. uh, talk to me about that. I mean, 
Well, you know, Jung says that every man's theory is a self-confession. So we could broaden theory to mean that all of that we do is a self-confession, meaning that everything that we have an impulse to do and every impulse we take to lift all is expressing something of our own nature. We often don't realize that until after we've taken the lift off and then we get it because then we have a conscious relationship to something. Whereas we've been in the unconscious relationship of seeking something of our own self that's being mirrored back to us. So that wanting to liberate the heart from that huge, beautiful, but huge pedal heart, orchestral heart, to this portable carbon fiber, um, D Comac DHC, really was, we could look at perhaps symbolic of letting go of excess baggage and of feeling like you had to go through life weighted down and heavy emotionally right. with past experiences to say, you know what, I can be free to move easily. I can go anywhere I want to go because that DHC comment can go anywhere you want it to go. That's right. That works, take a lot. That, you know. Well, you, I mean, you're absolutely right, Kathleen. You're right that that was, that was the motivation was that I, that the instrument represented for me that feeling of it's beautiful. It's got a history, but it's not me. And right. it's not going to let me move in the world. Right. And, and, and connect in the world. So, so let's talk about the, the trajectory because I think everyone can do that with, or we're all doing that, maybe not with an instrument or a tool or something like that, but we're all doing it that we see, you saw, talked about seeking. And mm -hmm. I think, I think we, we can seek to, we can be self-seeking in, in, in the terms of self-seeking um, a repetition of, 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 of hiding. And I think we do that, you know, when we're scared and we play small and we, I mean, we all do that. That's seeking that same, the, the, the hiding self. And it sounds like you're saying there's also a tiny spark of seeking that which we do not yet know. Yes. And that, seeking the larger self or the whole of who we are so that if someone is is inadvertently seeking the hiding self okay. then what they're doing is they're seeking a very limited role they're just seeking one expression and it shuts off access to all the rest of who they are so that part of what shifts things is when instead of coming in a particular role, we come to whatever it is we want to do with our whole self. And we see what, ha what impulse has the, the impetus to emerge at that moment in time and that time and place. And doing that, we're moving from the, what we might call the larger whole self versus any one little compartment of who we are. The hiding self, for instance, is a compartment of who we are. It's not the whole of who we are. It may be the us we're most familiar with because the primitive psyche, the unconscious psyche, set that emotion so young, we don't even realize we, we're different. I mean, this right, is what been, part of what like practicing that role for years. Yeah. yeah, that people don't even know there's more to them. They don't even know there are options beyond the plain little. They don't oh. even know. <laughs> right, and the trick is, there I am inside that not knowing, and how do I get out of it? And, and I can see that that happened with me with the harp over time. And I believe, I truly believe that it can happen for anyone through a practice with a thing. I mean, I, I'm assuming that's what meditation is, but I'm thinking that that experience of meditation engagement with something can happen with anything. Like it could happen with this, which is from the banana. Um, mm -hmm. If I were to really engage with this, and my teacher Tony um, used to have us do something called rounds, where we would, we would take something like this and we would play with it for an hour 
each going around the room doing something different with it, you know, you know, putting it on our nose or, 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 and then eventually we'd find different things to do with it. And it would, it would start emerging. This would start to have so much resonance and richness just from playing with it. And I find that when we, when we go to our instruments or our lives, we are often playing the same thing over and over again and not knowing how to deconstruct it and have a, let it have a different relationship with us. And I, yeah. And be open, be open to the creative possibilities, those little sparks that are the impulses that will come to us and intrude upon the little box or compartment or role or way of, way we think we should do it. So how so, do we know when that happens? How do we know when that's- you feel, it. you feel it in your gut. Something in you, you felt something that translated to the idea and image, I wanna liberate the heart. It is the fire in the belly. It is the, it, it is that, that um, it is a, it, it's an embodied visceral prompt I, I don't even it's hard to describe it but i know you know what i'm talking about and i bet people watching have experienced it it's like you feel this energy and all of a sudden instead of struggling to make the phone call to start the belly dance class you're making the phone call and you find yourself there yeah or, definitely, i definitely have experienced that thing of it's impossible it's impossible it's impossible oh it's inevitable like yeah. it doesn't go but there's nothing in between that yeah, and I guess if we want to try and accelerate that process or if we want to try and move forward with it more quickly, then what we can do vis-a-vis -a -vis meditation, mindfulness practices, um, practices like a body scan where we really are checking in and learning to pay attention to the sensations in our body, we develop the muscle of being in relationship to our own body and unconscious by listening, paying attention, observing what's happening internally. And internally, first and foremost, in our literal physical body. Because those things, those prompts, that fire we're talking about comes from the body. I don't, it, yeah, no, I, I hear you. And I think that I know that for me, at least, you know, when I sit there or I meditate, I'm like, am I feeling it? Am I feeling it? Am I feeling, you know, so I, I, I feel a little lost. And so I would love to have you talk about it as we might go looking for it in, in our relationship to an instrument. Well, I think if we went to our instrument, and let's just start with the instrument of our own being and our own body, and you gave yourself 10 minutes before you before you put your hands on the heart, either sitting on your heart bench or you decide to just lie down on the floor beside your heart and you let your mind's eye follow your breath and you just become aware of the rhythm of your own breath. And then you begin with your breath to go down to your toes and you start at your toes and then you go to the foot and the ankle and the heel and the calf and you work your way up your body with your breath just noticing okay like right now just notice your toes do they feel cold do they feel warm do they feel tingly you know what's going on in your ankles right now you know is there any sensation that's making itself known this practice this as a practice for 21 days, 20 minutes a day, two 10 minute periods will transform your relationship to yourself, which then when you sit at the heart, you're in a totally different place when you put your hands on the heart to, to so, know what the heart is giving you. I, I, I'm such a baby. I'm like, I don't want to do that. I just want to just, but I get it. I totally yeah. get it. Um, and I think you have meditations, you, yes. you have sight. And that, that, because as you were talking, I was like, I don't want to think about that myself. Maybe she, you know, is that, is that what you have in your meditations? Are you talking about how to do that? So that well, the meditations that are in my meditation library, Inner Divine Spirit, uh -huh. actually look at the Judeo scripture, scriptures okay. from a symbolic perspective of Jungian analysis as movements of how our psyche works and how we move forward towards individuation and wholeness. So 
I don't necessarily walk you through what I just did, which is called a body scan. Um, although I have in the past done recordings for groups I worked with. So I'll see if I can pull yeah, one of them out that we might post. Let's talk um, about that, yeah. And then, yeah. And, then, and then it might be interesting to see how we would then take that. I mean, we talked about this last time, even mm. about how to take it to an instrument or a tool or you know whatever someone is going to, how we take that, because we wanted to talk today about a relationship, about relationships. Mm -hmm. And so how we take that relationship with ourselves and then put it into something else. So we are not alone. We are connected with something else. Yeah, and what I'm just gonna say about that is that when we are in relationship to ourselves, mm -hmm. and if you practice that body scan for 10 minutes a day for the next 21 days, you're gonna have a consciousness of relationship to yourself that then translates to your ability to be in relationship to the heart or to another person. Because in truth, as Eckhart Tolle talks about the power of now, we're we're really rarely in the now right right because instead of being here with a full awareness of what i'm experiencing as i'm dialoguing with you i may be off thinking about the plumber who's at my house or at right. the next thing i have to get on to so to really practice and the body scan is a way of doing it and people could google body scan sure. um, israel regardi who was a chiropractor has a wonderful book called the one year manual and he talks about, he gives basic instructions for the body scan. And again, I can pull something together. We can go. Okay. Um, it may take me a little, a two, but no I'll rush, get there. No rush. Yeah, but um, it, it's amazing. We think we're in relationship, often right. we aren't. What we're doing is we're just operating as if everything is an extension of us and a reflection of us. Okay. Instead of really being in relationship to the other. So let's just talk, I know we have to leave, um, and let's talk about, you know, one thing that people can do, and um, th this week, I mean, you talked about the body scan, and I yeah. think that's, that's, that's great, and they can go back and listen to what you, what you said while you were here, mm -hmm. and I'm going to say that in addition to our body scan, to then take that into one other thing, as soon as we have that, to take it into one other thing, even if it's touching our own hand, so that we're aware of our, just aware of our relationship to something else. And if we can take that into an instrument of sound, whether that's, you know, hitting your desk or playing a, a, a harp or whatever you have, and just explore in the same way that you just told us to go from the bottom to the top, do the same thing with whatever we see as the bottom to the top of that instrument and our relationship to it. Absolutely. And this is jumping ahead a little bit, but your summer harp jam class oh, right. where you look at the progress, chord progressions right. that you can work with is a wonderful, uh, that's a wonderful exercise to pair after doing the body scan right. to go to the harp and just play the one chord to the five chord and see what you what it evokes in you in terms of body sensation and emotion then play a one chord and go down to the six and then back up to the five and see what you feel you can do it with individual notes too yeah i was going to say for anybody uh, who's not a musician or they yeah. don't know what you're talking about um i would just say actually um explore the relationship with anything and any other thing and coming yeah. back and forth and yeah. then try it to another and if you've got a piano try it with you know the c c note and yeah. and and then to other notes and really just exploring that in part to get away from that thing of how do i do it right yes and actually get into the into what is my relationship and what do i hear yes yes absolutely Great. All right. Well, that will be fun to take a look at today in terms of relationships. Mm -hmm. And I'm really looking forward. We're, we're trying to do a shorter, a shorter session today and see how that goes. There's so many more questions I have. And I look forward to seeing you again next week, Kathleen. Yes. And maybe we'll do relationships take two next week. <laughs> I would love that. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. <laughs> Wait. Oh, crap. I had this gum in my tooth the whole time. Oh, I wasn't noticing it.
Okay. It was just keep me from coughing. Okay. I can kind of see it. All right. Well, well, let's have one last smile. Okay. We'll say goodbye. Bye. All right. I know you have to go. That was Thank great. So much. Okay, good. I couldn't tell if it was good or we'll find out. Yeah, we'll find out and we'll see how it how we feel about the smaller and if anybody comments on it once okay. it's done. That's all perfect. Great. Okay. okay. Bye.